Hi, I'm Matt Bunger, Illinois State Grazing Specialist with NRCS. Today we're going to be talking about fencing. The fencing comes in many different shapes and sizes, from high tensile, electrified, smooth wire fence, to barbed wire fencing, woven wire fencing, as well as temporary fencing. Your electric high tensile fence can come in a variety of sizes from seven wires or six wires for small ruminant enclosures to one or two strands just to keep livestock out of sensitive areas or for maybe some forward grazing for the calves where the cows can't move but the calves can continue getting underneath there and getting that one fresh uh, bite before the the other livestock. The key to a good fence is the bracing. Without good bracing, your fence will eventually fail. The brace assembly or any bracing for your fence is really the heart of your fence to keep it intact for the time required for that fence to be in place. There's many components to a brace assembly from the brace post, the end post, your brace wire, the pins, and the insulators. So with, with all those components, they, it, each one is an essential part of the longevity of the fence. An H brace is typically used for everything, your barbed wire, your woven wire, and your high tensile wire. But for your single strand high tensile wire, and even in some cases, a two wire high tensile fence, you don't need to have a large H brace. Or what you can use is strategically placing line posts that are just a little bit bigger in size, potentially a five inch or maybe even a six inch line post where you would hook up your single strand or two strand high tensile fence. If these are driven in, these would be sufficient enough for bracing of, of that type of fence. There's a number of different products fence can be built with from wood treated wood to natural grown wood such as uh, Osage orange or, or hedge, cedar, as well as your treated treated post, uh, which again, it, those would have to be with a specific treatment as specified in our NRCS conservation practice standards and specifications. Or you can have other posts such as steel T post, a composite type fiberglass and wood, as well as a straight fiberglass T-post. There's a number of these, and again, they all have to meet a certain specifications for, by NRCS. With the steel T-post, there is a requirement that a steel T has to be the 133s, and this is a certain pounds per linear foot of post. With the steel tees, you know, there are certain insulators that would have to be attached if you're using this for electric fence, which potentially can pop off and cause the fence to uh, short out. One's no better than the other. For barbed wire fence, steel tee and wood post are your best bet. Uh, in some cases, some producers like all wood. Some producers use their wood post for the bracing and continue on with the steel tees rest down the stretch of fence. For high tensile electric, the composite post or the fiberglass post, the round or the T, have pre-drilled holes that you can put a clip in there or you can run the wire through. And by having these, this is a little bit more of a secure way of attaching the wire to that post and not have to worry about grounding out versus if you'd have maybe a steel T post. Another important consideration in planning a fence or your grazing system is locations and types of gates that might be needed in the operation to move the cattle from one place to the other. There's tube gates or metal gates. There's temporary gates made with high tensile wire that can be stretched across, you know, each individually hooked to the fence. Uh, or you could fabricate your own, what some might call a Kentucky gate. There's so many different components, and again, each of these have a requirement 
if you're building it to the NRCS standard specifications. And each state will have their own located in the Field Office Tech Guide Section 4. So as a technical service provider, when meeting with a landowner, really be thinking about their goals, objectives, how they want to move their livestock, how often they want to move their livestock, and what type of resources they have. Everything does not have to be a permanent fence. A lot of good things can happen by using temporary fence, and the temporary fence gives you that flexibility to change and adapt to your operation as, as time goes on. If you're working with a producer that you're going from a continuous grazing system to five pastures, and they have goals down the road to expand, but it's just not the right time, go with a temporary fence. Don't do permanent because that really locks you in. You can do some permanent in places as, as maybe a, the main lines to then do some subdivision off of, but overall it's the flexibility. The use of one wire high tensile, even two wire and three wire high tensile is a good consideration to use around sensitive areas, some streams and creeks around the ponds. It doesn't mean that these areas can't be grazed, but it's keeping the livestock out of those areas for the majority of the time. It also allows for the movement of wildlife, which is a concern to livestock producers that may not want to put up that fence to begin with. High tensile wire, it's not going to break. You put a spring in it, it will bounce back. So that, that concern, I think, can be addressed pretty easily. An additional component to your high tensile electric or any electric fence is the energizer. In all cases, you're going to have grounding rods at the energizer itself, and then you'll also have additional ground rods at the fence. There is a specified distance between these two sets of grounding rods. In addition to the energizer, you want lightning protection, which can be in the form of the lightning arrestor. Every fence should have a lightning arrestor on it no matter what. You could really save the life of your energizer because these are not a cheap piece of equipment at all. There's a number of different types of energizers as well. There's your solar, there's your uh, 110 power units. What works best, you know, when you're in a remote situation, definitely your solar is gonna be the way to go. Without the energizer, containing the livestock is gonna be very, very difficult. And that includes the correct energizer setup ground rods and power source. In order to make sure you're getting the correct current to your fence, you should get yourself a fence tester. It's good to check a number of places on the fence to make sure your volts are, are all consistent. As a TSP, when working with livestock producers, practice code 382 fence is what we refer to for all fencing practices. This covers, again, your barbed wire, your woven wire, your high tensile wire. It even includes corral fence and board fence specifications for installation. With practice code 382 fence, there is a lifespan of 20 years for the fence. So if a producer you're working with is not sure about their operation, putting in a permanent fence may not be the correct way to go. There's a number of sources out there on fence as well as sources on how to build fence. But the thing to remember, if you're working with a producer that's applying for financial assistance, that producer must follow the NRCS Conservation Practice Standard fence found in the NRCS Field Office Tech Guide.